All right, everyone, it's clanking in the morning time. You might as well clank now because we could all be a pile of ashes at some indefinite point in the future, considering what uh, Zelensky just ordered to happen. We'll be talking about it after I caffeinate even more. Mm. The old tradition is the new tradition. Now, again, I've uh, stopped with the energy drinks in favor of coffee. Only problem is, of course, it takes time to brew it. And when you're uncaffeinated, you're like, um, yeah, whatever. Anyway. Ukraine just attacked a couple of Russian air bases in uh, what is the most major escalation in the war in that region uh, to date. Russia has already warned um, with regards to this, and, and of course, up front, I oppose the invasion of Ukraine. I feel sorry for the Ukrainian people. Um, I feel sorry for the people in East Ukraine whose you know, farms and homes have been overrun. I certainly feel sorry for people in Kiev that are repeatedly without water and electricity. It's the nature of war, of course. Um, that being said, um, you're, you really are proverbially poking the bear when you decide to send drones into Russia itself to attack air bases. Unfortunately, one of the bases, it looks like, uh, contained nuclear-capable bombers. Now, there's no uh, saying that there aren't actually nuclear weapons lying around there. If Zelensky hauls off, and, and, and if Russia doesn't completely obliterate Ukraine at this point, prevent this from happening again, you run the risk of a very interesting scenario where World War III pops off because of an accident. I'll explain how. Let's say that Zelensky says, okay, we've proven that we can get drones in under the radar into Russia, and we can bomb targets on Russian military bases. Hee <laughs> hee, this is going to be fun. Uh, U.S., we need some more drones. They get a shipment of drones in. And they look, kamikaze drones, maybe they've got missiles on them, whatever the fuck methodology they choose to use. And they attack another air base. But they accidentally attack a, a plane that's already loaded with a nuclear warhead. And it manages to make the warhead go off. <laughs> the safety mechanisms weren't working properly that day. Like the one that was accidentally dropped on U.S. soil by a bomber at one point and all of the safety mechanisms failed except the last one it almost ended up killing a million people but whatever we'll get past that lots of nuclear accidents you know mechanical uh, objects don't always work perfectly even if they are very well machined by people who sweat nervously when they're putting the components together let's say it goes off low yield high yield doesn't fucking matter they end up they, they bombed the stockpile in some way and the warhead uh, was triggered. It was triggered like a liberal recently on Twitter. And a nuclear cloud rises over the horizon, and the military base is completely vaporized, killing 10,000 people or something. What's the problem? Technically speaking, Ukraine just nuked the Russians. They led directly to the explosion of a nuclear weapon on Russian soil. Now, this nullifies one constraint on Russia using nuclear weapons currently in Ukraine. Ukraine does not have nuclear weapons. If Russia uses even a small yield atomic weapon, and they can, they can build these very easily, they don't need to use the high end, like the Tsar Bomba shit. They can make bunker buster style nuclear weapons. They can make Davy Crockett device style things that have a much lower yield. It's not even measured in the kilotons, and use it on tank columns. They can use it on military bases. They could use it on Kiev if they wanted. It's not beyond their technological capability to make thousands of such small weapons in a few years' time. It would be easy for them. They have the materials, they have the expertise, the designs are already there. Hell, they probably have literal briefcase nukes. We're not entirely sure that those were ever really successfully developed. Of course, the DPRK claims to have backpack nukes. That's probably just horseshit. Anyway, here's the problem. The constraint on them using even small yield nuclear weapons on Ukraine is pertinent to the fact that Ukraine doesn't have any nukes. They don't have to be in NATO to be effectively protected by the Western world's universal condemnation if Russia were to use first strike capabilities against a nation that does not pose a threat to its territorial capability. To be clear, no matter how many times Zelensky crazily attacks Russian bases with drones, he can't overrun Russia. Now, the, the manpower is not there. You don't have the logistic capability. You can't advance, at least on land or, or by air, except for by drone, beyond your own borders. You're fighting the Russians in your own country. Also gives you a field advantage, to be clear. You don't have that once you get into Mother Russia. Now, by the way, is the wrong time of year to invade Russia anyway. There's no right time to invade either. Just to be clear, historically that doesn't work. If, though, you bomb the airbase 
and a nuclear weapon goes off. Or you bomb it and then the Russians trigger a nuclear weapon and blame it on you. What happens? The breakdown goes away. The problem for Russia is right now, if it were to use such weapons, even China and India and all these countries, all of the, the standing on the line countries, the fence sitter countries like Turkey and India, universal condemnation. Even China and North Korea and nations like that would be very hesitant to back them. You'd probably end up with China voting for a condemnation at the UN. You'd probably have a suspension, at least partially, of trade agreements. Russia would get completely pariahed and they it would wither. They, they wouldn't have anywhere to export any of their goods to. The, the Russian would begin to destabilize. The people of Russia would probably stage a revolution at that point. They'd say, okay, <laughs> enough is enough, dude. Vlad just uh, launched a nuclear weapon on a non-nuclear state. But that universal condemnation would not happen if a nuclear weapon first is deployed on Russian soil, even if it's a Russian weapon and even if it's a false flag. So Putin knows the drone's coming. He says, okay, as soon as the explosion hits, five minutes later, press the little red button, nuke our own fucking base. I don't give a damn. We'll end this war same day. What happens then? Russia has been hit first. There will be no condemnation from China. There will be no condemnation from, from any of the other countries that Russia parties with. The Saudis won't condemn it. Uh, all of the people that Joe Biden has pushed away from the Western sphere will refuse to condemn it. And why would they? Russia got nuked first. Russia can now deploy a low-yield nuclear weapon on any, tar any military targets in Ukraine that it wants. Russia would probably give them 24 hours warning, lay down your arms or I'm killing all of you. I'm, I'm going to withdraw my troops and I'm just going to fucking nuke your cities. At some point, they would either have to completely capitulate and accept Russian occupation, or Russia would start nuking the Ukrainians. And they would use the fact that the weapon went off first in Russia to justify it. That's the last thing that's preventing Vlad from doing that, just to be clear. He's not crazy. But if he senses an advantage diplomatically that allows him to pile drive his opponent, which Zelensky is coming dangerously close to getting to that threshold, yeah, he'll take the advantage. He's a, he's a Russian. He's, he's not going to do the namby-pamby uh, world policing thing like Western countries typically do, where they're willing to slog around for 20 years occupying a nation to absolutely no fruitful avail. He's not going to do that. He'll deploy a couple of nukes. He'll bomb the uh, nuclear plant there, causing a major disaster, and he'll say, look, we got nuked first. They committed an act of nuclear war on us. They blew up, a, you know, this, this plane had a couple of warheads loaded into it. They stupidly attacked the plane, and the plane blew up. Well, you know, we've got to constrain the Ukrainians and their imperialistic nuclear warmongering. He would feed this line to his sphere, and it would work. And so you would end up probably with a nuclear confrontation. Then, regardless of whether Ukraine is annexed entirely or just crippled and incapacitated, Vlad consolidates his hold over the east of the country regardless, by the way. Um, what happens then? A, a total new Cold War. You've just had a nuclear conflict. Well, that's worse than the last Cold War. The, the worst uh, uh, yeah, part of the last Cold War was the Cuban Missile Crisis. There was no actual nuke deployed. It was just that both sides were suggesting the possibility. And this freaked people out. Why is it that people back in the 50s or 60s, any time the possibility of the deploying of even a limited nuclear strike was optioned, everyone freaked out? There were protests, and journalists certainly condemned the concept and said, you know, we're going we're gonna to turn the world into a radioactive wasteland. And then they go and watch a sci-fi movie, and then they say, well, you know, maybe nuclear land isn't so bad after all. And giant robots and shit. Then they come to their senses, they sober up and realize why it's a bad idea. Now, though, Ukraine can explicitly attack the Russians on their own soil. And people will call you Vatnik or something if you point out why this is dangerous. Yeah, I'm aware that these air bases are being used to attack Ukraine. Let's be realistic here, though. Russia is a nuclear state. The Ukrainians don't necessarily know where the nukes are. Russia has already sent nuclear forces closer to Ukraine. An accident waiting to happen. Literally a nuclear conflict waiting to happen. And if Zelensky is sane and gives a damn about his people, which at some point I don't think that he fucking does, I think he mostly cares about his money laundering operation, he's not going to expose him to the possibility of getting vaporized by a Russian atomic weapon based on the fact that he wants to go after a couple of airfields. Supposedly the Ukrainian troops are kicking ass. If you're kicking ass and you're at the very least drawing Russia down to stalemate status and making inroads back into your own territorial areas, why the hell do you need to do this? 
Why not just get you've got you've got a optioned uh, massively upgraded anti-air capabilities, so the air bases shouldn't be a problem. And by the way, what if Zelensky decides to attack a non-military target? What if he gets the bright idea, hey, you know it'd be fun? I'll send a drone all the way to Moscow and I'll kill Putin. Oh boy, that'll go over really well. What if you accidentally kill some U.S. dignitary that's trying to calm things down at some point? You know, oh shit, the uh, U.S. envoy was there checking on the nuclear... The U.N.'s envoy was there looking at the nuclear systems that the Russians had uh, moved forward. And we just killed the U.N. envoy. Yeah, that'll go over very well too. So many pro fucking problems potentially attendant to such behavior. So uh, regardless of what you think about the war at large, this particular kind of act should be universally condemned. I'm not seeing a whole lot of condemnation from the, uh, from the legacy media. Shame on them for their warmongering. That's about all. Peace out.